Hey everybody, what's going on? Jeff Rieger, another episode of The Daily Ticket, this one for Thursday, October 26, 2023. How are you? What's going on? I gotta say thank you to you, by the way. Yesterday, we did the podcast about the lion scary theory from my brother. Love my brother to death. Big time Bronco fan. But I told you guys his theory, and I know you're not buying into his theory, and I appreciate y'all, because in the comments section, you weren't ripping on me, you were ripping on him. So thank you for that. I made sure to send him every negative comment. Maybe that will change him. Maybe he'll stop being such a hater. Maybe he'll realize that the way he acts towards Detroit Lions fans is not nice. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Wanted to get that out of the way. Let's get into it, shall we? Because Wednesday was a big day for the Michigan sign-stealing saga, if you will. Big news breaking. This is such a weird story, by the way. It's news every 24 hours. Hell, it's news every four hours, it seems like. There was a couple of things that broke yesterday. Not only did Connor Stallions put together a 500 to 50, 600 page manifesto, if you will, of how he's going to take over the Michigan football program. He called it the Michigan Manifesto. Apparently, every idea he's ever had about coaching football, he put in there. Very organized, they said. Wants to be the next coach of Michigan. I don't quite think that's going to happen. He's now currently suspended. And by the way, when you hear the term manifesto, is that ever a good thing? Has the word manifesto ever been linked to something positive? No. You hear it and you want to turn the other way. But the fact that he has a manifesto and he was talking to a student of a Power 5 school and wanted to get into coaching and Sports Illustrated uncovered their text messages to each other. It does seem like Stallions was a little obsessed with Michigan football, wanted to become the next coach, gloated about knowing Chris Partridge, the linebacker coach, Jay Harbaugh, Jim's kid. And we already knew most of this, I feel, because just looking at the videos that you see on Twitter, you see Stallions on the sidelines next to Jesse Minter, the D.C., Sharon Moore, the O.C., Jim Harbaugh is always in those pictures as well. So I don't think anybody really believed that Stallions is just some low-level $55,000 making a year staffer that has no power. I think you know and I know that he's more than that. But we still didn't have the smoking gun, if you will. We didn't have the silver bullet. We really didn't have actual evidence to how deep this thing ran. All we knew and all we know, right, was that Michigan with Stallions broke what we thought was a rule that was stupid to begin with. Back in 1994, they made a rule that you're not allowed to go to other stadiums to scout teams. You're also not allowed to use electronic equipment. They made this rule not because they thought it gave teams some crazy advantage, but because they felt bad for teams that didn't have as much money. They didn't want teams that couldn't afford to send somebody on the road. Feel bad about stuff while bigger, richer schools would send people on the road all the time, right? So in 1994, they said, this is against the rules. Not a big deal. If you look at what level of violation it might be, maybe a level three violation, not a huge deal by any means. Just not a big deal by any means. However, it becomes a bigger deal when it becomes more widespread. And if Michigan knew about it, It started with Stallions just going to these games we thought on his own or having people go. Then, of course, information comes out that he purchased 30 tickets to Big Ten games. Then more information came out that it wasn't just Big Ten games he was going to or sending people to. It was also college football playoff games. But we still didn't think it was a huge deal because at the root of it, sign stealing is not illegal. This rule, of course, is against NCAA policy. But I thought Michigan would get a slap on the wrist, not a big deal. But it does seem like now it's gotten bigger. And now maybe you're looking at a lack of institutional control. Because if they could prove that Michigan coaches knew about it, if they were in on it, then it becomes bigger. It becomes more serious. And I think yesterday they proved it. This according to the Washington Post. Let me read this to you, shall I? Apparently there was an outside firm. We don't know who hired the outside firm. They presented to the NCAA 
photographs of people investigators believed to be Michigan scouts in action. So they had actual footage of people at games that were not at Michigan Stadium taking footage with their cell phone. They have video evidence of that. The photo showed these people seated at games of Michigan opponents this season, aiming their cell phones at the sidelines. Days later, the outside firm told the NCAA cell phone videos depicting the coaching staffs from these games were uploaded to a computer. So you take the video that you got from your phone, you upload it to the computer. Not a huge deal right now until the next sentence is read. Do you know who maintained and had access to that computer? Stallions. You knew that. As well as several other Michigan assistants and coaches. The smoking gun, my friends. I think we knew this was going on, but this seems like proof that it's going on. An outside firm tells the NCAA, I don't know who hired the outside firm, but they have proof. They have photos of people photographing the games, videoing the games. Those people then take the footage, they upload it to a mainframe computer, and Stallions or other Michigan coaches then take it down, they look at it, they figure out how to attack an opponent. But we're not just done there. We're not done there. Goes, no timeline has been disclosed for when the NCAA could conclude their investigation with Jim Harbaugh. We know that Harbaugh said he's going to fully cooperate. But listen to this. You're wondering, well, who did they scout? Who did they target, right? This is where it gets really interesting. The opponents targeted the most were, of course, Ohio State. Atop the list was Ohio State's, Michigan's top rival. Scouts planned to attend as many as eight Ohio State games, costing more than $3,000 in travel and tickets. Eight! Okay, I don't really care about sign stealing. I told you this before. I actually think what Michigan did was kind of brilliant until they got caught, and now it's not as brilliant, I guess. Eight times you're going to scout the Buckeyes? Eight? That is a disadvantage for Ohio State. That without a doubt is an advantage for Michigan. Eight times? $3,000 in travel and tickets. We'll get to that in a second. Next on the list, Georgia. A potential Michigan opponent in the college football playoff. Michigan scouted them four or five games scheduled for in-person scouting and video recording. Also costing more than $3,000 in travel and tickets. In total, these people said Michigan's sign-stealing operation expected to spend more than $15,000. $15,000 sending scouts to more than 40 games played by 10 opponents. It's insane. Goes on to say, according to the university public salary disclosure records, Stallions is listed as making $55,000 in 2022. So let's recap very quickly. They scouted the Buckeyes eight times. They were set to scout Georgia at least four to five times, looking for that competitive edge, if you will. The people that scouted them then take that footage. They upload it to a mainframe computer where stallions and Michigan coaches have access to it. Like, what? So it's widespread. There's no more lone wolf. There's no more thinking that Stallions was just doing this by himself because he's obsessed, because he read a Michigan manifesto, right? He just really wanted to be a Michigan head coach, wanted to help the program. They didn't know what he was doing. That's all lies. That's bogus. If you believe the Washington Post, which, by the way, I had a guy just call me on the radio saying the Washington Post is nothing but Democrats, so he didn't believe anything. Big Michigan fan, of course. So if you're wondering if Michigan's involved, they're involved. But then you got to take it a step further. So we know that Stallions was doing this. We know that Stallions had a network of people that he was paying, sending them the games to record footage and then upload it to a computer. We know this. We now know that Michigan knew about it. Coaches had access to that computer that the footage was uploaded to, that Stallions was managing. Coaches and Stallions. So we know that too. The only thing we don't know is does Jim Harbaugh know? And by the way, doesn't it seem impossible for Harbaugh not to know? I mean, let's be honest. Coaches know. Stallion knows. Jimmy don't know. And they started doing this after Michigan was two and four. 
Since then, they've lost all of three games. Oh, and by the way, TCU was one team they did not scout. And the other thing we don't know, who's paying for this? Stallions makes $55,000 a year. Am I supposed to believe he's independently wealthy? $3,000 to send people to Ohio State. $3,000 to send people to go scout Georgia. $15,000. Is that his money? Can't be. Is it a boosters? Is it a donor? Whose money is it? So we know some stuff. We still don't know if Harbaugh knew, which of course he had to have known, but like I don't know for sure. So maybe I shouldn't say that. And we don't know who's paying for it. Because I find it hard to believe that Stallions is that independently wealthy that he's able to bankroll himself just because why? He likes the university because his parents went to Michigan. They were Michigan fans because he wants to be the next head coach of Michigan because he's obsessed with the football program. That's why he bankrolled it. No, if Michigan coaches know about it and are accessing the computer that the footage is on, somebody else is paying for it. I don't know who. I'm sure it's going to come out. It doesn't seem like the story's done. So here's all the information we know. I just gave it to you, right? Stallions is involved. He's not a lone wolf. Michigan is involved. And it's gone from a little blip on the radar to a total lack of institutional control and a total disadvantage for every team that Michigan has to face. So now you ask yourself, well, what's going to happen to Michigan? NCAA is investigating. NCAA takes forever. They just got done with the Kansas investigation on Bill Self, didn't find anything, took six years. The NCAA is going to take forever. So I'm not worried about the NCAA. Not worried about them at all, because the worst they can do, suspend Jim Harbaugh if he's even here after this season. I'm sure they could vacate wins, maybe count games as losses, maybe put the program on a postseason ban. Let's not forget. This started with what we think was a level three violation, and maybe now it's up to another level one violation with this widespread lack of institutional control going on. So you're kind of looking at two level one violations because they're already investigating Harbaugh, talking about the NCAA, about allowing kids to visit during the COVID dead period. So you could potentially be looking at two level one violations. That doesn't sound good. That's like death penalty stuff. But take it a step further. I'm not worried about the NCAA. Their investigation is going to take forever. They're going to decide what they're going to decide and you're going to live with it. What I'm worried about now is this season. Because I told myself when this started, and I think Michigan fans felt the same way, that yes, it started as a blip on the radar, not a big deal. You weren't worried. The more stuff comes out, the more worried you get. I understand that. But I think we all kept telling ourselves, we get to watch this team play Penn State. We get to watch this team play Ohio State. We get to watch this team potentially be in the Big Ten title game and then go to the CFP. But what if that doesn't happen? Like if Michigan without Stallions, and by the way, don't you think some coaches are going to be suspended now? Whatever coaches were accessing that computer, don't you think they're going to be suspended because Stallions was suspended as well? But you always had the thought that if you go on November 11th, the crappy valley, and you take out Penn State, Screw you. Call us cheaters if you want. We beat the Nitty Lions without stallions and are cheating. Bring on Ohio State last game of the regular season. Beat them too. Screw you. You want to call us cheaters? Call us cheaters. We just beat the Buckeyes. We must not be that great of cheaters, right? And while I still believe you're going to play Penn State and I still believe you're going to play Ohio State, what I'm now concerned about is the Big Ten and the college football playoff committee. And you might be saying, what the hell are you talking about, Jeff? And let me tell you, the Big Ten has the ability to wreck you. Now, there's not precedent for this because this hasn't happened before. There's never been a scandal to this size before, stealing signs, cheating, whatever you want to call it. But the Big Ten has power. Now, would they use their power to exclude you from the Big Ten title game? to suspend Jim Harbaugh, to, I don't know, even end your season. I don't know what they're capable of because, again, this has never been done before. But think about it for a second. The Big Ten, a couple years ago, Jawan Howard and that Wisconsin assistant coach, the open slap punch, 
The Big Ten suspended Jawan for five games. The Big Ten just suspended for a half a Michigan State student from the Michigan game for the illegal pancake. The Big Ten has power. Is the Big Ten going to allow you to play in the Big Ten title game if they think you have a ridiculous, unfair advantage over teams? Don't forget that the Big Ten was the ones that alerted other Big Ten teams. Every team that Michigan has yet to play, Purdue, Penn State, Ohio State, I know I'm missing one, but they said Michigan's got your signs. You better change up your signs. And let's not forget what the Big Ten did with Michigan State. They went to Sparty and said, dude, you guys stink. Big Ten, uh, Michigan's got your signs. You might want to cancel this game. The Big Ten gave Michigan State the opportunity not to play the game. Now, Sparty played. They got their asses kicked 49 nothing. You know how it all went. But if the Big Ten told all the Big Ten teams, Michigan's got your signs. You think they know the information that the NCAA now knows? And that the Washington Post knows? I would say yes. And if they took it that serious to tell other schools, you better watch out, they got your signs. Do you think they might think Michigan is cheating and not allow them to play in the Big Ten title game? And if you don't play in the Big Ten title game, guess what you don't do? You're not going to the CFP. You're not going to the CFP. Because the College Football Playoff Committee, while I looked at their bylaws, and there's really nothing in it that says they can exclude a team for getting in trouble or cheating or being on probation. There's nothing like that. If you don't play in the Big Ten title game, are they going to put you in the top four for the CFP? The answer is maybe not. And let's not forget what the College Football Playoff Committee is. It's a bunch of officials from other schools. Do they like you, Michigan? Do you think if it went to a vote, which it is a vote, and Ward Manuel is on that committee, but he wouldn't be involved in this discussion because you're not allowed to be in discussions about your own schools. But do you think there would be people on that committee that say, Michigan, we're leaving you out. We're putting you at five, and there you go. Sorry. You can go to a nice bowl game, but you're not going to the college football playoff. This is a mess, people. This is a mess. I'm not worried about the NCAA. I'm worried about Michigan fans that have waited their whole lives for this opportunity to have a great team that has a chance to win it all. And maybe the Big Ten interrupts it. Maybe they wreck your season. Maybe the CFP wrecks your season. And before you say that's not going to happen because there's no precedence, I would agree with you other than there's no precedence for this cheating either. This is bad. This is really, really bad. But I know what you might be thinking. Michigan is a cash cow to the Big Ten. The CFP would want to see Michigan in the playoff. It'd be a villain. You'd get more people watching. Plus, it's Michigan. People love watching Michigan. So the odds that the Big Ten or the CFP committee get involved, maybe they're not that great. But I don't think we're done hearing the evidence. Okay? So now we know, to recap, not just Stallions, he's not a lone wolf. Big Ten coaches, or make that Michigan coaches, knew about this. Widespread sign-stealing operation. Pretty bad. But let's say it comes out that Harbaugh knows. Maybe they got proof of that. Hasn't come out yet. Let's say it comes out that a booster or a donor or somebody in Michigan is paying for these people to go and film football games. Do you think that changes things? The longer we get into it, the more that comes out, the more I become worried that the Big Ten or the CFP committee step in and say, sorry, season wreck. And then, of course, the NCAA will do their operation. They hate Jim Harbaugh to begin with. They'll probably uh, try to slap Jimmy with his all they got. But this is a mess. This is an effing mess. And I blame myself. Because I didn't think it was a big deal to start. And I actually applauded Michigan for living in the gray, finding a loophole, searching for that competitive edge. And while I still feel that way, while I still am pretty impressed with what they did, and obviously it worked because you're not doing it if it doesn't work, pretty sure they're screwed. 
and forever are going to go down as cheaters. Now, if they still beat Penn State and they still beat Ohio State, then they're allowed to participate and go win a national championship. Then it doesn't matter, right? People can call you cheaters all you want and you say, we won with Stallion. We won without Stallion. We won with Harbaugh. We won without Harbaugh. Whatever the case is, right? But will you get to that point to begin with? That's what I'm worried about. So comment section below. Let me know what you think. We have new information. By the time you see this podcast, I'm recording this at 7.42 on Wednesday night. By the time you see it, it's Thursday morning. Maybe there's even more information that pops out. I don't even know. But this looks really bad. I had another podcast planned. But again, I had to change course. This is pretty damning. This is awful. If you're a Michigan State fan, I'm sure you're loving it. I did speak about this on the radio yesterday. For Spartan fans, you got to be loving this. Because, yeah, your team sucks. And, yeah, you need a coach. And, you know, you've been dragged through the mud. But <laughs> the Mel Tucker saga is nothing compared to what Michigan is accused of doing. Right? So rest assured that maybe you get the last laugh that, hey, you're not in the CFP, but neither might be Michigan. So let me know what you think. Comment section, please. I want to know. Are you concerned? Am I being overdramatic? I'm not worried about the NCAA. I'm petrified about the Big Ten and the CFP committee. And if they have the ability, the power, if they want to wreck Michigan season, and if they decide to do that, God, that would suck. The fans deserve better. We deserve to see this stuff. We've been waiting all year. Excuse me. So let me know what you think comment section below. Speaking of the comments, I always read the comments, a good comment and the bad comment. Please comment, rate, review, download the daily ticket. Here's the good comment. This is from yesterday's podcast where my brother says the Lions haven't beat anybody. So they're probably not that good. Like they're good enough to be bad teams, but they're not going to do anything special this year. BattleBots Review 9812 says, good stuff, Rieger. That game was more about the Ravens beating the Lions than the Lions losing to the Ravens. Fair enough. I like this one. This one from M. Hicks Son 007. Tell your brother you are the rubber and he is the glue. All his negative thoughts bounce off and stick to the Broncos. Go Lions. How about a couple more ripping on my brother, shall we? Let's see. What else do I have here? Oh, here's this one. Rieger, I'll never understand why people hate on you so much. The hair looks great, and your brother is just miserable with his Broncos right now. But the Lions definitely need to stay healthy, and they need Montgomery back as soon as possible. Here's another one. I never understood all the head Jeff hate. The guy is underrated. I enjoy listening to him. Give him the 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. slot, LOL. Well, thank you. That's from Jeremy County, 9546. So thank you. Those are some of the good comments. Yesterday, I read all negative comments. Remember somebody called me a douchebag? Yeah. So, I deserve to read some positive comments. Let's read the one negative comment. This comes from Brad J6947. It says, Rieger, shut the F up already. God, are you effing annoying? That's all it says. So, I'll do that right now. I'll just shut the F up. But let me know, comment section below, what do you think about the latest? in the Michigan sign-stealing saga. People, this is not good. The Michigan coaches know. The Michigan staffers know. Does Jim Harbaugh know? He might. He's got it, right? Who's paying for it all? All stuff yet to be undercovered, or uncovered, rather. But it just keeps going from bad to worse. All right. We'll catch you tomorrow on the Daily Ticket. It's going to be a Friday. I got all kinds of stuff in less more Michigan news breaks, and then we'll be talking about that. Always appreciate you watching and listening to the Daily Ticket. Love you all. Please download, rate, review, wherever you get your podcast. We'll catch you next time on the Daily Ticket. Goodbye.